Well, hi guys and girls, Emma again. Back to workshop. This is part 15, I think, on this little engine build. It's been a while and I've been dragging my feet because I've been away on holidays and haven't had any spending money and there's been a lot of other stuff happening, but here we are. Next part to build here is the eccentric, which is a pretty simple little thing. It goes in behind here and there's a gap or a sheave for the the eccentric rod which runs to the piston valve and there's there's a cam with two steps or uh, two stops on it which enables the engine to be reversible now because this is positioned a little bit differently to the drawings and it's very difficult to get right and probably because this is a little bit thicker uh, this is not as close to this edge as, as it as it was and probably this flange here isn't quite as thick maybe this is different there's a lot of variables so best to measure it and what I've done is just found out I've just found a drill that seems to fit there nicely and give us the the least amount of tight spots and that's how thick we're going to make the overall eccentric have a look there it's 170 about 178 thou As it's drawn here, it's 170 thou. So we're not that far out actually. To be honest, when we look at that. But it's it's enough to, to need a little bit of adjustment, so we're gonna make this 178. If we have a look here at the drawing it's 90 thou wide for the which is the the piece of tin for the for the rod and 80 thou for the for the cam or the, the slip eccentric so we're going to go a little bit thicker than there and call it 178 this is made out of a piece of inch brass and Myford Boy it's gone quite a complicated way to do this and I'm not sure that's entirely necessary we probably when we get it half done are going to realize that it's the way it should have been and we're going to make it again but I'm just going to set up a piece of inch bar and offset it the required 140 in the in the four jaw chuck and we're going to run a drill through it and ream it and machine the eccentric and then probably set it up on centre and mark this out here and probably we're just going to file this out if we can't think of another way and part him off so pretty straightforward part really I think and let's get in and do it so next job I guess is to mark this out and what I've done is I've got the height gauge out and I've found the centre there and then I've set it up with a little precision square there at 90 degrees and I've adjusted this up the 140 thou that we need and I'll put another mark so what we've got is another mark there 140 thou from the from the center we'll put a little center punch mark in there and we're going to set him up on that center So that's a pretty easy job to set that up on centre. I've just used a centre collet there and one end in the centre punch, another end in the in the centre here, and a clock and a four jaw chuck, and that should be about 140 thou off. So that's what we're sort of aiming for.
next job is to find a tool and face this off and put the, the eccentric piece on and drill it and run a reamer through it and set it up again so that this is concentric so let's get in and do it so there we have it we've got a 2mm or 90 tower fraction over 2mm step there for the piece of 2mm tin which is what that's going to be made out of so it's just sitting a fraction proud there and we've got 580 millimeter eccentric there 140 hope oh sorry 580 thou eccentric there and hopefully 140 thou off center so next job is to set this up on this diameter nicely on center and put a center drill through it and put a center drill in it and then drill him and ream him and I think at this point part him off by the way I really got sunburned today I went to the markets this morning didn't pick up very much there's some tools that's going to touch there uh, half a dozen pin punches in a match set look how far that is out whoa went the wrong way and what else a uh, little tap wrench and a couple of tool makers clamps that's all I ended up going up to Woodridge the markets the international market which is good fun it's good to get out of your your comfort zone occasionally. I really enjoy going up there. Always lots to see. Went to Helen's Vale Flea Market there too this morning and that's once a month. Didn't buy anything there. And all I managed to get really was sunburnt. A bit of cold tea on that and we'll sort it out. A bit rusty on the four jaw setup. I think I'm going to get this camera out of the way and we'll come back when it's set up. So that's not far out. And hopefully that eccentric there should be the exact amount offset required to run the engine. So. drill and yes I should be using a spot drill but at this point I haven't I'm lucky to have enough to have a brand new 6.4 mil drill there which grabbed And that should only need a, a fraction out of it to be running fit on that, that eccentric and I'm going to do that later rather than drill right through this piece of brass and make it no good for anything else so next job is to set this up and to part it off so there's that part parted off it's a fraction thin but not enough to worry about it goes on this shaft it's a nice nice run and fit on there doesn't want much movement in it and this has got a pin in it and there's a 120 degree opening there that that pin slides in so that it rocks backwards and forwards to give you forward and reverse and that's what it looks like there so the way Myford boys done this which seems to be the easy and simple way to do it is just line this up on the drawing and scribe one line there and to get the ruler 
and carefully scribed out a line. What I've done is just put a, a fan, a series of cuts in there with a hacksaw with a fan. I'm just going to break these pieces out gently. And the next job up is a quick file up with a nice fine file. And that's what the part looks like. Should match the drawing pretty exactly, which it does. This is our crank that goes on there like that. That slides in there. And that gives us our reversing. So that's that part done. Put them all together. Fingers crossed that it all goes together still. Everything's still still loose here. And that's the slipper seat trick. So there's not much more to do to this engine. It needs a rod here and the piston valve and some fittings. There's oiler on top and there's a pipe underneath and some paint and we'll see if it goes. But thanks for watching and more soon. We've got I think the, the more difficult parts out of the way. So it's pretty straightforward now. But thanks for watching. Be kind to each other and don't forget to comment and subscribe. Really appreciate interaction. And more soon, guys.